this video is going to talk about linear inequalities. So a linear inequality looks like ax plus b is greater than c. Again, it looks like a lot of variables, but we really just have this one variable of x, and a, b, and c are going to be real numbers. And again, we can't let a be equal to zero like in equations, because if it were, then we wouldn't have a linear equation. We'd just have a bunch of numbers. So we're looking at graphing, and we want to graph x is less than or equal to 1. Well, when we graph, we can use, some of you might have learned using closed and open circles, but we're also going to talk about interval notation, which deals with parentheses and brackets. And we might as well just talk about that now. If you have parentheses, it means that your endpoint is not included. And if you have brackets, it means your endpoint is included. So I'm looking at this, and it can be equal to 1. So when I come here to 1, it's going to be a bracket. And it's going to be less than 1, so it's going to be, I'm going to open my bracket to the left, because that's where my numbers are less than 1. And I would put my bracket in here, and then I'm just going to put my arrow here. Then that means that it goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, if I want to write the interval notation, again, we have to think about the endpoints. And it also, we've talked about the endpoints, but come down here and it says the smallest interval and then the largest interval. That's how we write them. Well, down here, this is negative infinity at the end of that arrow, because it just goes forever. That's our smallest value. The farthest thing to the left is our smallest value, so it's a negative infinity, it's a sideways 8, and if you notice here, positive and negative infinity always have a parenthesis with them. Okay, so I'm not going to include the lowest point, which is negative infinity, and I'm going to go all the way up to 1, and in this case I am going to include it so it has a bracket. x is greater than negative 6. Okay, this means not included, and this means include. So x is greater than negative 6. It's going to go to the right of 6 because it's bigger than negative 6, but it's not going to include it. So this time I have a parenthesis here at negative 6, and it's going to go this way forever up to positive infinity. So the interval notation, we start at negative 6, and we don't include it, so it has a parenthesis comma, the largest value, which is going all the way up to infinity, and you never include infinity, so it'll be a parenthesis. You can't include infinity because you can't ever get there to say this is exactly where I'm stopping because there's always one more. All right, what happens, though, if we have a compound? This is what we call compound inequality. What are we going to do here? Well, we're going to really think about as negative 7 is less than x, or if you want to, you could write the x first, and since it's open to the x, I rewrite it open to the x and negative 7. And then I also have x is less than 4. It doesn't include either one of them. So down here at negative 7, x is greater than that. So it's going to go this direction, and it's going to be a parenthesis because I'm not going to include it. And it's going to go this way forever. And when I have x is less than 4, it's going to come here at 4, not include it because it's a parenthesis, or it's less than, and it's going to go this way forever. And if you notice, in between here, in between my negative 7 and my 4, there's both a green and a purple line. So I'm going to shade that in because that's really where my answer is. My answer is really from here to negative 7, and up here to 4, and everything in between. Over here, those numbers are less than 4, but they're not greater than negative 7. Over here, all these values up here, they're greater than negative 7, but they're not less than 4. The only thing that satisfies both of those inequalities is what's in between. So how do you write that interval notation? Well, what's the smallest value that's in black here? It's a negative 7. And do we include it? No. And then we go all the way up to 4. That's the biggest value in our interval. And do we include it? No, the inequality says we don't. So it would be a parenthesis. So we need to learn some rules before we start working with inequalities and trying to solve for x. So if I add 2 to both sides, we're starting with 4 is less than 6. If I add 2 to both sides, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8. And 6 is less than 8 is still true. 
If I subtract 2, that's going to be 4 minus 2, and we want to know if it's less than 6 minus 2. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, and is that less than 6 minus 2, which is 4? So 2 is less than 4, which is true. So we want to multiply both sides. So 4 times 2 is going to be 8, and we want to know if that's less than 6 times 2, which is 12, and yes, that one's also true. What if I divide both sides by 2? So 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2, and is that less than 6 divided by 2, which is 3? Yes, 2 is less than 3. Let's multiply both sides by negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 2. And is that less than 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12? Negative 2 is not less than negative 12, so it's false. What if I divide by negative 2? 4 divided by a negative, I'm going to write it below here, is a negative 2. And is that less than 6 divided by negative 2, which would be less than negative 3? No, negative 3 is farther to the left, so it's smaller. So again, we have a false here. There's a rule that says if I have multiply or divide by a negative, I have to switch the inequalities to make it true. I have a y and I want to do the multiplication and addition properties to, just like I do with equations. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and I find that y is less than negative 5. Well, if I'm going to put that on a number line, I would do something like this, negative 5 and 0. Just two reference points, that's good for me. And y is less than negative 5, so it's a parenthesis opening to the left because I've got to go less than, and it's going to go in this direction. And for an interval notation, it's going to go to negative infinity, and it's going to go all the way up to negative 5, but not include either one of them. Now, here's the tricky one. I have to divide by negative 1, but I'm dividing by a negative, and that was one of those rules where we had to switch the inequality. So negative x divided by negative 1 is x, and 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. Okay, so let's make sure that we did this right. Let's get a graph and then we'll see. So we say negative 4 and 0, and x is less than or equal to that, so it's a bracket opening to the left because it's got to be less than. So let's pick a number that's in there. Let's say negative 5. So the opposite of negative 5 has got to be greater than or equal to 4. The opposite of negative 5 is 5, and that is greater than or equal to 4. If I tried something over here like 0, well, the opposite of 0 has got to be greater than or equal to 4. Well, the opposite of 0 is just 0, and that is not greater than or equal to 4. So we know we did the right thing here. And the interval notation would be negative infinity, because it went all the way down there, to up to the biggest point of negative 4, and it includes negative 4, because of my inequality said and equal to, but never includes an infinity. Finally, I've got a fraction here. I need to fix it up. I need to multiply everything by 3. And when I multiply by 3 here, it gives me 3 times negative 1 third is going to be negative 1 times x, plus 3 times 5, and that's going to give me plus 15, greater than, and then 3 times the 4 thirds, which the 3's will cancel each other out, and we're just left with 4. And if I subtract 14 from both sides, I'm going to have to fix my, my negative x is going to be greater than, so carry my inequality, And I have to switch the inequality because I'm dividing by negative 1. So that means that x is less than 11. Finally, we have to look at the kind where we have a compound inequality. Well, what you do to the center, you do to either side. So this is just 3x in the middle. I'm trying to get to x here. So in order to get to x by itself, I'm going to divide that by 3. But that means I have to divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side. That gives me negative 4, less than or equal to x, which is less than 3. And on my number line, negative 4 is the smallest value, and 3 is the largest value. 
I can include 4 and it's going to go this direction. I can't include 3 but it's going to go this direction so you can see again that it's anything between the two values and it's going to be a bracket negative 4 2 of 3 with a parenthesis. One more. What you do to the middle you do to the outsides. So I need to subtract 3 from the middle, so I'm going to subtract 3 from the left hand side and subtract 3 from the outside, left, right hand side. 15 minus 3 is 12, less than negative 2y, less than 25 minus 3 would be 22. Now I have to divide by negative 2, but since I'm dividing, I've got to change my inequalities. I'm dividing by a negative. Since I'm divided by a negative, I've got to switch those inequalities and divide by negative 2. And that means that 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. And this just gives me y in the middle because the negative 2's cancel. And 22 divided, but divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 11. And normally we write our inequalities that are facing to the right. So I really need to write negative 11 because it's the smaller value which is less than y because it points to the negative 11 and then it points to the y and the negative 6. So we have negative 11 here and it's greater than so it's going to go this direction and we have y is less than negative 6 so we have negative 6 down here and it's less than that it's going this direction and we have anything in between. If we want to go back up here we could look at this as and just think about this you could just disregard this if you wanted to and you could say y is less than negative 6 so that's what we did in red and y is greater than negative 11 and that's what we did in green and then it's everything in between and that means that our smallest value is negative 11 not included parenthesis comma negative 6 is the largest value on that interval and it also has a parenthesis